Hi, so in this video we are going to see about sleep. So this, uh, this topic has been asked previously in many university exams as how does REM sleep differ from non-REM sleep? What is meant by paradoxical sleep? Mention the stages of sleep. And I think there are many uh, one word questions also that have been asked based on the EEG changes on during the stages of sleep. So we will see uh, the concept behind all this. So what is meant by sleep? So by definition, sleep is defined as unconsciousness from which a person can be aroused by sensory or other stimuli. See, there is a difference between sleep and coma. In coma, the patient cannot be aroused. But in sleep, the patient can be aroused by sensory or other stimuli. So what are the different types of sleep? So there are basically two types of sleep. One is slow wave sleep or non-REM sleep. And the next one is REM sleep, otherwise called rapid eye movement sleep. So now I hope you know the full form of REM. It is rapid eye movement. So there is a slow wave sleep or non-REM non sleep. And there is a REM sleep. Okay. So first we will see about the slow wave sleep or non-REM sleep. So the slow wave sleep means the, it is the initial part of that sleep. Which means the person is just falling asleep. And it begins with, so when the person just falls asleep, it begins with this slow wave or NREM sleep. Now, this has got four stages, stage 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, and after these four stages of NREM sleep, we'll have an REM sleep. So, the sleep cycle is like this. First, we'll have 90 minutes of NREM or slow wave sleep, which is followed by 20 minutes of REM sleep. Then again, it will be followed by NREM sleep. So this is the sleep cycle. So you can say that the majority of the sleep is during this NREM phase. Okay. So we'll just draw the sleep cycle uh, diagram here. So suppose these are the different stages of sleep. And this is the time on the X axis. We can see that initially the patient is awake. Right. And slowly he falls into the sleep. And then he slowly, slowly progresses to this stage 4 it as through the stage 1 2 3 and 4 he finally reaches the stage 4 of a sleep which is deep sleep right and then what happens is slowly the sleep lightens okay it moves up to the stage 3 then stage 2 and it reaches stay after stage 1 it reaches the rem phase okay see the patient is not yet awake but he reaches a state which is just below that that is rem sleep then for the next 20 minutes the patient will be in that rem phase then again the sleep will deepen to stage 1, 2, 3, 4 and the cycle continues. And as the time progresses, we can see that the duration of this of each, each cycle is decreased. And finally, the person will be awake after 8 hours. So this is the sleep-wake cycle. You can see that we've got majority of the time the patient is in NREM sleep, but we've got bouts of REM sleep in between. Clear? Right. So... State, now we have to know what are the EEG changes during this each stage. Okay, So stage 1 or it is also called N1, it basically consists of a mixed frequency pattern. That means it is somewhere between alpha and theta waves. You know when the patient is relaxed, when the subject is relaxed, we have alpha waves. But then when we are falling into sleep, we have theta waves also. So the EEG waves will be something like this. We will have theta waves along with alpha waves. Okay. In N2, that is stage 2, we have a particular ECG, EEG pattern called sleep spindles and K complexes. We've got sleep spindles and K complexes. So the EEG will be something like this. Okay. So this here, in this EEG, this high, frequ high amplitude activity and high, high amplitude and high frequency activity, that is called sleep spindles. Right. And then we've got a biphasic wave pattern and that is called K complex. So sleep spindles and K complex occur in the stage 2 of sleep. Right? And in stage 3 and stage 4, see actually the initial thought process was that there was a different stage 3 and stage 4. But later on according to the American uh, Association of Sleep Science, they've, they've combined both stage 3 and stage 4 into, two, into 1. Okay. So the characteristic feature of the stage 3 and stage 4 is that they've got delta waves. So basically it is that deep sleep. Okay, so in deep sleep, we get delta waves. Remember, it is D and D. Deep sleep, delta waves. So the delta waves are something like this. Right? So 
these are the different eeg changes that occur during the sleep changes see eeg changes are important for your from an exam point of view so remember is good if you can draw the diagram also when eeg changes are asked okay so now we'll see what are the physiological changes during slow wave sleep so during as we fall asleep our body temperature begins to fall right there will be no rapid eye movement in this nrem stage and then there will be decrease in heart rate and blood pressure the respiration will be slow and regular and there will be an increase in gastrointestinal activity which is due to increased parasympathetic activity and there will be decreased muscle tone so see you can remember this uh, in an order initially there is a fall in body temperature no then move on to your eyes no rapid eye movements move on to your chest area tell about the heart rate and bp and then about respiration then about the stomach that is the gastrointestinal activity and finally about the muscle tone if you remember that order it will be uh, easier for you to memorize these points okay so that will complete our slow wave sleep in which we've seen the stages sleep wake cycle the eeg changes and physiological changes now we'll move on to the next which is rem sleep or rapid eye movement sleep so these as we see saw in the sleep wake cycle they are bouts of uh, sleep that it, you've got bouts of rem sleep which lasts for about 5 to 30 minutes and occurs every 90 minutes in young adults so after every one and a half hours you will have a bout of rem sleep for half an hour okay and the duration of the rem bouts increases as a person becomes more rested so as the sleep continues as he becomes more and more rested the duration of rem bouts increases okay so again here this is a diagram showing the uh, sleep wake cycle the difference between rem and nrem sleep so see which means that if the person is not rested the person will have more nrem sleep while if the person is more rested he will have more duration of rem sleep okay so now we'll see about the physiological changes during rem sleep so during rem sleep it is associated with dreaming and active bodily muscle movements during this time the person will be difficult to be aroused by sensory stimuli yet the patient will awaken spontaneously so it will be it will be difficult to, for us to call them but they will be they will awake spontaneously and the muscle tone will be exceedingly depressed except for this eye movements that is why it is called rapid eye movements now the respiration will be irregular there will be irregular heart rate and respiratory rate there will be irregular muscle movements along with rapid eye movements so these are the different uh, characteristics of physiological changes that occur during rem sleep so you can see that during this phase actually the person is not that rested he is dreaming he has got active bodily muscle movements uh, he has got irregular heart rate and respiratory rate is irregular muscle movements with rapid eye movements okay so these are the physiological changes during rem sleep so why is rem sleep called the paradoxical sleep or the paradoxical sleep is actually rem sleep why is it called paradoxical or desynchronized that is because during this sleep the brain is highly active and there's an increased metabolism increased overall metabolism of up to 20 percentage and also the eeg waves show brain waves similar to wakefulness so similar to your uh, eeg waves that you are awake when you are awake during sleep also the eeg waves are similar to that of wakefulness that is why it is called paradoxical okay so the eeg waves during rem sleep is something like this that is why it is called paradoxical because of the brain activity despite being in sleep okay and one characteristic feature of uh, this rem eeg is that they've got something called pgo spikes or ponto geniculo occipital spikes see when you hear the term occipital what what do you mean it is it, uh, the main function of the occipital cortex is visual right so, so ponto geniculo occipital means these are the spikes that occur during your rem or rapid eye movement so during rapid eye movement you get these ponto geniculo occipital spikes so that is a characteristic feature of eeg during rem sleep so now we'll move on to the differences of nrem and rem sleep so based on timing in the sleep cycle nrem occurs first whereas rem occurs after nrem sleep with the relation to duration normal adults we know that nrem takes takes up more time right so 75 percentage of the total sleep is in nrem whereas 25 percentage in rem sleep and what about autonomic responses see during nrem sleep there is sympathetic inhibition 
that is why we've got low heart rate low bp low respiration whereas in rem sleep there is sympathetic excitation that is why we've got high heart rate bp and respiration what about eyeball movement in uh, nrem obviously there is no eye movement but in rem there is rapid eye movement okay uh, now based on dreams so in nrem also you can have dreams but those dreams cannot be memorized because consolidation will not occur during nrem sleep but during rem sleep consolidation is there occurring so dreams will be well memorized okay so that is a major difference between dreams in nrem and rem sleep what about muscle tone so in both uh, rem and nrem it is inhibited but it is profoundly depressed in rem sleep okay except for the rap uh, the muscles of the eye others are profoundly depressed what about the type of sleep so nrem the person enters into deep sleep so as the stage progresses in nrem sleep the person is entering into deep sleep whereas in rem the person is more likely to be awakened so the sleep lightens during that time okay and what about eeg waves so the in nrem sleep we've got in each stage we've got different different uh, eeg and especially in stage 3 and stage 4 we've got slow wave high am amplitude whereas whereas in rem sleep we've got high frequency low voltage eeg so that is a major difference between nrem and rem sleep so you can use a mnemonic to study all these differences is an important question from an exam point of view so finally we'll briefly see about the theories of sleep what are the different theories or what are the uh, mechanism of sleep okay so the main theory which is prevalent is that sleep is caused by an active inhibitory process which means there are certain areas in the brain which when activated will inhibit the others so that the brain can be put to sleep okay so these are called the sleep promoting areas and one of the major center that is associated is the rafe nuclei so the rafe nuclei secretes serotonin and this serotonin will actively inhibit the other processes so that the person can fall into sleep another important area concerned with sleep promotion is nucleus of tractus alterius and there are also other sleep promoting areas in the diencephalon especially in the anterior hypothalamus so these areas the rafe nucleus nucleus of tractus alterius and the area in the anterior hypothalamus they take part in actively inhibiting the processes so that sleep can ensue right now another theory is that there are certain neurotransmitter substances related to sleep now the main reason for such a thought is that when they injected the csf from sleep deprived animals that means there was they they put some animals into sleep deprivation and they took their csf and injected into other animals so when they did that they found that those injected animals fell asleep quickly which means there is some substance that is being formed when the the person the when the animal is sleep deprived okay so that is how they found these transmitter substances so experiments show that substances in cerebrospinal fluid or blood of sleep deprived animals can induce sleep in others so what are these substances so two important substances that have been identified are muramel peptide and delta sleep inducing peptide so what are they muramel peptide and delta sleep inducing peptide these are two two peptides that are as associated with sleep okay and finally so now these these two theories do not uh, explain the cause for rem sleep right so we've got one more theory for that what is a possible cause for rem sleep so they say that rem sleep is influenced by acetylcholine and how did they find that because drugs mimicking acetylcholine action increases rem sleep okay so that is why they say acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter which is related with rem sleep so their theory is that there might be large acetylcholine secreting neurons in the reticular formation and this might be activating certain brain regions during rem sleep so these are the three important concepts regarding theories of sleep okay so now moving on to the applied aspect we just have to know uh, some basics about certain sleep disorders what is insomnia we know it's a chronic inability to sleep despite adequate opportunity just the, the patient is just not able to sleep and that is insomnia what is nar narcolepsy narcolepsy means episodic sudden loss of muscle tone accompanied by irresistible urge to sleep 
even if the patient if the subject was concentrating on something the person will suddenly fall asleep okay so that is narcolepsy and the one is periodic limb movement disorder again is a sleep, a sleep disorder in which there will be limb movement the person will not be aware of right then we've got bruxism what is bruxism it is nocturnal grinding of teeth and is associated with dreams during rem sleep okay and somnambulism is sleep walking we've seen many movies in which the per sleeping individual is able to stand and walk about so these are the different uh, applied aspects which you can write when any uh, question related to sleep is asked or this can be even asked as a part of an mcq or one word questions right now uh, as an additional scoring point you can also delve more into the mechanism of sleep see sleep is a very complicated topic we've got many concepts in that uh, so if you can read about the mechanism of sleep it's uh, good so i hope the concept is clear we've discussed about the types of sleep the stages of sleep what are the physiological changes in rem and in rem sleep what are the different eeg waves during those uh, sleep what are the differences theories of sleep and applied aspects so i hope this concept is clear thank you